Hi guys, welcome to the Creativity Incorporated. My name is Diana, and I would like to welcome you today to our cave. Um, and I say ours because this space also belongs to you. Um, I wanted to show, start our, our video, or yeah, our video, <laughs> by um, showing you my little finds. And I just want to share that um, whenever I find all these little finds, I'm like eager in my heart to show it to you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I enjoy showing it to you. I got all these finds for three bucks, and I'm just really, really excited. I'm thinking that um, I'm going to start giving them away to my patrons, like here and there. So if you are my patron, could you please provide your address and your shipping information uh, on a message on the patron page so I can surprise you guys here and there with uh, good finds. And if I have your address, you know, I can pick you and then just, it, may, it makes it easier for me to just surprise you if I have all your shipping information. Um, I have this chess box. It's beat up. It's my husband gave it to me because the pieces were, that were inside were phenomenal, but he didn't like the table. But he bought another table. But the pieces on that table were not so good. So, anyways, long story short, I got this. Um, okay, for me, I love the fact that it's not like black, white, and red, like every other chess board that I've seen. So. Um, I was, that's when I knew it was meant to me. So I want to take it apart and I'm going to sand it. I want to make this old thing look and feel older. So what I'm going to do is take off the hinges first. Then I decided to take it outside to sand it. I felt, um, you know, my kids are at home because there's a break. So I didn't want all this old like dust flying around. So I just took it outside. Um, I have a little patio in the front of the house, or I mean, not in the front of my house, by my by my um, balcony in my room, and um, I felt that was like peaceful time, and I just decided to take it outside and sand it. I did it with a 80 grit, then I went back with a 220 just to refine it and make it better. I went ahead and I sanded all the sides, even the inside. Um, at first, I was going to leave it black, but then I went ahead and I sanded it black. But it left a lot of look. Like, the paint was left inside a lot of the black grooves. Oh, I loved it so much. I felt like it enhanced the color. But I used this gel stain. I totally recommend it. It was uh, one coat. I applied it one coat because I don't want it that dark. It was um, So it was easy. I just I applied it with uh, like uh, one of those dry sheets from the dryer. That's how I reuse my dry sheets. I, uh, I use it to stain and to wax my furniture. I had to elevate the piece because of the handle. And then I decided instead of hinges, I'm going to uh, attach the both parts with a, with a couple of things. And you guys will see how I do it. But um, because there's a gap and because the wood is the most crooked lopsided wood I've ever seen in my life, um, that's why the hinges were all um, bent and they were kind of like, you know, put on, they're like screwed on the piece. And then eventually the whoever made it opened it and like whatever happened to the hinges, that's how it was going to stay because it wasn't, it was just, uh, I don't know if you got a, a, a glimpse of what was happening there, but it was just chaos. So instead of me, you know, putting back the chaos, I'm, I'm deciding to, this is my solution. I'm going to make a canvas um, hinge but I'm attaching it with wood uh, glue, and I feel like that's going to be a stronger bond. And plus, I like this bond because it makes the glue hard. It's not a, a soft glue like, you know, like a gel or a silicone that sometimes they're soft, even when they're dry. Like, you know, they're still rubbery. This is completely solid rock, and um, that's why I'm using uh, wood glue.
I don't know if you noticed, but I put the glue, I mean the canvas strip, on the inner part of the wood, like the inner, yeah, inner wooden parts, like the, just the, the inside parts, and then I'm attaching the leather as well to the veneer part where the chest is drawn. I did this because at the end of the day, I do want to use this box as well um, as a game board, as well as my writing box. And so, you know, when you open it, you know, opposite so you can play on it, you want the least amount of resistance and the least amount of, you know, fabric in between. So um, that's why I only did it. So it's only going to show the leather and not the canvas. Because I wanted to use the same locking uh, mechanism or the little lock lever that it came with, and um, I don't want to use a screwdriver, which I think it had before. I don't remember. Um, but I had these little, like, uh, balls that I'm attaching um, here. But because the stick, I mean, the hole is, like, worn out and it's big and out of shape, I'm using this two-part epoxy to put in the hole. And that way I just insert my little ball. And um, that way I'm able to uh, use it as a closure as it was before.
Notice I didn't put glue on the hinge part, on the inside of the hinge, because I didn't want to ruin um, my fabric, and I don't want it to be too thick there in that part. Beca um, because when it f opens, it opens in a, uh, in a weird way, and it closes in a weird way, and I just want it to give the fabric that uh, um, flexibility to open and close. I don't want it to eventually tear, so I'm leaving that part alone. I'm going with this knife, uh, palette knife, to um, kind of really push it in the edges. I am going to trim the edges very closely with the ruler. So that's why you guys saw me putting the glue right up to the edge very neatly and very carefully because I am planning to trim the edges so that it has a perfect smooth edge finish. It took me a while to figure out how I wanted to display my tools and my pens and pencils and brushes and stuff. And But once I had it figured out and figured out how I was going to hold them, and first of all, I was like so confused in what leather, to, what color leather to use. That to me was like probably the biggest thing to do because I have black and I have the brown and do I use blue again? I mean, it was just crazy. But once you figure all of it out, I decided to do use my two-part epoxy. Um, on some, make sure that um, when you put the fabric, I mean the glue, on your fabric and on your leather, make sure it soaks it in. Um, what I did is I made sure that it was so soaked that the glue was gonna seep all the way to my wood on the bottom, underneath the fa the blue uh, velvet just because I wanted to make sure it wouldn't pull uh, the leather or all those things that it's held, I mean, the, the, the leather's holding back onto. I didn't want it to fall because of the weight, so I make sure that it was soaking and it went all the way to the wood, just so I could have that strength and that stability. A trick that worked out great for me was um, to put use tape. So, okay, so I'm trying to put the glue, hold the leather in its place. At the same time, I'm trying to put the the like brush. In this case, the brush. Um, keep it in that same place, but I don't want it to uh, be glued by accident to the leather or to the piece. So in order for the leather to stay in its place where I want it to glue and also to avoid uh, gluing the brush to the whole piece, the whole gluing part, I'm using tape. And I can just, once it's all dried, I can just come and take it off or not. I can just leave it there, but you can't see it or anything like that. So it worked out great. And this is how it came out. I feel like these are the things that I want and need on my thing. I put Velcro on two parts uh, just so I can have that um, flexibility. For me, options and flexibility is key. So I just 
um, have the option of putting thicker things, thinner things, and not be able to struggle or rip things apart by pulling them in and pulling them out. I have the option of opening and closing it with that Velcro. It worked out great. And um, I really love how the velvet looks compared to that brown edging. Now you guys remember this uh, ephemera book that I made last week. And if you guys don't believe me, man, this was incredible. The book fits exactly snugged in here. Um, and I didn't plan it. It just it worked out great. And this is the book I made about two weeks ago. Um, and so I hope you guys liked this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think of this writing box. I love that it has a dual purpose. And also it serves as a like a little table for me on my like a lab table because I take the kids to the park and while I sit in my chair sometimes I struggle to have like a table, like a lab table or you know things like a writing place where I can you know watch them and at the same time do my journaling. And so I feel like this was perfect for me. I've been meaning to do this for a while and I knew I wanted to what I wanted to have inside and I brought you guys along. Now, this I didn't plan. Um, I meant it. I meant this pencil pen holder to be a little more to the right so that I can, uh, because the journal doesn't fit right. So um, I guess I should have measured it, which I did when I put it there. But when I grabbed it to put the glue, I totally forgot I had it in an exact spot. And as you can see, I'm like struggling to figure it out. But it closes. I just didn't want it to be like like this, like that I have to figure it out every time I close it. So I will figure it out. Uh, eventually, if I have to take it off, I'll take it off, or if I put something else there or anything. But I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if it looks older with this brown edge or trim, or would you have left it how it was? Let me know in the comments down below what you liked or what you could have done different. Thank you so much for my patrons um, and for those that are subscribing to the channel and giving them thumbs up. It really encourages me to um, think of new ideas and excites me to share them with you guys. And like I mentioned in the video, in the er beginning of the video, um, if you're a patron of mine, um, please put your address on, send me your address to the Patreon page so that I can um, do giveaways, surprise giveaways. I'm gonna be just, I do a lot of vintage shopping as you guys see that uh, most of my videos have uh, a, a segment at the beginning of the video where I show you guys uh, an exciting new find or purchase that I did at the vintage flea market. And you know, sometimes I buy a lot of them, sometimes they're exciting and I wanna share them with you guys. So if you're a patron, um, I would like to at some point surprise you guys. So if you would like to please, I mean, I'd like to participate in that, please send me your address and your shipping, I mean, your shipping information and your name so that I can uh, send you a surprise your way. Thank you so much. So next time, guys, stay safe. Love you guys. Stay crafting. Bye.